Russian turtle tank. Tanks are expensive pieces of military hardware, and nations spend considerable amounts developing the most effective defenses to keep them on the battlefield and not in the scrapyard. Research and development on the latest threat detection systems, armor plating, and defensive countermeasures can take years to create and cost millions of dollars, representing the cutting edge of military technology. In some cases, however, solutions are much more primitive. In the current conflict between Russia and Ukraine, there have been reports of a strange sight rolling its way across the battlefield. On several occasions, Ukrainian forces have encountered Russian tanks that are covered in what can only be described as a metal shed made from what appears to be thin metal sheets. The bizarre outer shell of the tank has led internet pundits to give them a number of names, such as the Shed Tank, Barn Tank, and Turtle Tank, among other less flattering names. At least one internet commentator compared the boxy structure to the A7V, a cumbersome, slow-moving German tank from the First World War, while others have noted that it resembles a covered medieval battering ram, more at home besieging a castle than in a modern combat zone. At least one of these tanks was captured intact by Ukrainian forces, giving a close-up look at this odd vehicle. The vehicle was a rusted-out T-62, an older, obsolete tank model that had its origins within the Soviet Union era, and was covered with the rudimentary armor on the roof and sides, and had a metal cage on the rear. There are also some indications that other tanks have been outfitted in this fashion, including at least one T-72, though this is speculation based on images that have circulated on social media. In addition to the metal shed, the Russian turtle tanks have an additional defense. On the roof is a cutaway, from which protrudes a number of omnidirectional antennas. These are connected to an electronic warfare system designed to disrupt signals sent between enemy drones and their operators. Of particular concern is the use of first-person view drones, or FPVs, which are lightweight and highly maneuverable carrying a small explosive payload and are designed to ram into a tank, destroying it. By cutting off the visual feed, the operator of the drone will be forced to fly blind, causing it to veer off course and hopefully crash into the ground. As can be imagined, this improvised protection has its share of drawbacks. Any anti-armor munition powerful enough to destroy a tank will have no trouble ripping through the thin plates, no thicker or tougher that can be found at a hardware store. On top of this, the configuration of the shed prevents the turret of the tank from moving, rendering its main gun essentially inoperable. And the one captured example didn't even carry any ammunition. Vision is also limited, with the crew only capable of seeing what lay directly ahead. As a result, the fighting ability of this vehicle in a combat environment is virtually non-existent. There is some indication that these tanks are used to clear minefields ahead of more conventional armored forces, while there is also some speculation that it's used to transport supplies to and from the front lines, and was not expected to face actual combat. Most likely, though, the Turtle tank will be used in tandem with other more conventional tanks and armored personnel carriers. During an assault, the modified tank can disrupt any enemy drones operating in the area, clearing a path for the rest of the formation to advance. Unmanned drones have become a ubiquitous feature since the outbreak of the war, used by both sides for reconnaissance as well as offensive operations. In response to the increased use of these FPV drones, tanks, and other vehicles are often fitted with what have been derisively referred to as cope cages, better known as slat armor. These improvised structures are metal cages that are fitted around the body of the vehicle. The mesh-like metal fittings are designed to, in theory at least, detonate a warhead or drone before it slams into the actual vehicle, mitigating the force of the impact or simply causing it to bounce off. When used against dedicated anti-tank weapons such as the Javelin missile launcher, this has proven to be totally ineffective. The Javelin is capable of punching through even the thickest of tank armor, so a simple mesh screen will do very little to stop it. Against drones, however, they may be more effective, though this is a matter of speculation. Slat armor is not a new concept and has been used by other militaries around the world for decades as a defense against grenades, RPGs, mortar rounds, and other relatively light munitions. Utilizing improvised additional armor protection is nothing new, though. Ever since armored vehicles first rolled their way across battlefields, soldiers who fought in them have always looked for a way to increase their chances of survival. 
During World War II, American tank crews would use sandbags, spare tracks, logs, metal plates, or virtually anything else they could get their hands on in order to increase the protection on their vehicles. The effects of these improvised armor additions were probably more psychological than practical, and in all likelihood did little more than increase the strain on the tank suspension system. During the global war on terror, the tradition continued, with American soldiers armoring Humvees, trucks, and other vehicles with scavenged metal plates taken from junkyards. Dubbed hillbilly armor by the troops, the improvised protection highlighted major flaws in the preparedness of the military to go to war, and was a major source of controversy at the time. In the current conflict in Ukraine, both sides have made extensive use of improvised armor, such as the classic wooden logs and metal plates, as well as slat armor made from nets, chain-link fences, metal bars, and whatever else the soldiers can find and utilize. The results, it would seem, have been mixed. There is video and photographic evidence of munitions bouncing off slat armor, and drones being caught in nets without damaging the target vehicle. While there is other footage of tanks equipped in the same way lying at the side of the road as nothing more than burning burnt-out hulks. One of the main reasons for the ineffectiveness of slat armor is that FPV drones are fast and maneuverable, and a skilled operator can fly a small drone through the slats, into the hatches, or many other openings. This innovation has led to Russian troops adopting the turtle-slash-barn tank instead of just slat armor to combat the threat. By having solid sheets of metal, there are fewer gaps that drones can fly through, which, in theory at least, will limit their effectiveness. These oddly modified vehicles vehicles may seem comical, but even the most unconventional weapon should be taken seriously, and for all their shortcomings, can still play a pivotal role in combat. When attached to other forces, a single barn tank may be unable to engage the enemy directly, but at the same time, it can disrupt the numerous drones that will swarm over the battlefield. Enemy forces would have to devote considerable time and effort to destroy or disable one of these tanks, resources that are no longer being used against more effective weapon platforms. By using older, outdated tanks for this role, such as the T-62, it is much less costly should it be knocked out than it would be losing a more modern tank. In short, the turtle tank is a pawn that gets sacrificed to protect the more valuable pieces, disabling drones and forcing the enemy to concentrate their fire on an obsolete vehicle, ignoring more threatening units. To date, a number of these modified tanks have been seen on the battlefield. One was confirmed to have been captured by Ukrainian forces at a village near Russian-occupied Bakhmut, and another was allegedly destroyed in a warehouse by Ukrainian forces. A third was knocked out by an artillery barrage, and another disabled by a minefield. Though these come from reports on social media, so this is difficult to confirm. The Turtle Tank is a primitive solution to a modern problem, and while they have had an underwhelming performance so far, there's no doubt that the design and tactics used will be refined and can change the course of the conflict. New measures will have to be taken to counter this threat, which will then lead to further countermeasures, all part of a cycle that has continued since the dawn of warfare. We upload all the videos that we have to censor from YouTube to our Patreon. Right now, you can watch uncensored videos on the Battle of Kantian, Medieval Warfare, and the Sherman Tank, all on Patreon. History is epic. Watch it uncensored.